This is the updated version of my Lieutenant Diamond build, my subsurface mining Corvette. Then I'm gonna go through all the outfittings, why I fitted, what I have, and what you can change to make it fit your playstyle. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Uncle Astronomy. So today we're going to look at an alternate version of my Lieutenant Diamond, which is a subsurface mining Corvette. If you're looking for other types of mining build, both this and all my other mining builds are going to be available on the Commander's Toolbox. You can find them on Vicon and in the description. Now, this is designed to be mining uh, the egg. If you're not familiar with the egg, I did post a video about it recently. Also, more info icon if you want to find that. But without further ado, let's go and let's break down this build. And we're going to start here with the hard points. First of all, you will see here that I, in the two medium slots here on the side, I have fitted subsurface displacement missiles. I fitted two, even though we only need one at a time, but that's just to bring extra ammo. I don't want to synthesize ammo along the way, and this is why I'm fitting two. We only have 384, I think, 86, 84, I can't remember, 380 something tons of cargo, and that means we can make do with two. If we were flying a cutter with like 500 tons, we would need three. But here we can make do with two, which gives us plenty of ammo to completely fill up our ship without having to synthesize along the way. The remainder of the hard points are just to deal with pirates. This is designed to mine the egg, and because of that, we're going to be locking in and out. Every time we lock in, pirates can spawn, so we need some damage output. The two small ones are in traditional fashion on a combat corvette, a overcharged and corrosive shell multi-cannons to soften up the armor. And then, of course, I have a large multi-cannon here, and I like to fit overcharged and autoloader. You can do whatever you want here, pretty much. I do recommend you keep the two corrosive, but you can do whatever you want here on the large one. And in fact, you can do whatever you want with the uh, with the weapons up here, the large and the huge hard points. This is just my recommendation. Now for the beam lasers here, I've got efficient oversized and haven't got long range thermal vent as you would normally do because we do not have any shield silt banks, so we don't leave any heat to dissipate. So we're much better off just putting efficient on it to get that extra damage boost and oversized again for even more damage output out of these two huge beam lasers. Now for the utility slots here, you will see that of course I have a pulse wave analyzer and I also have a point defense. The important thing is that you just put the point defense down here on the belly of the ship and that is of course to prevent people from sending out hatchbreak limpets and breaking up your cargo hatch, taking out your cargo, since the pirates will try to steal your diamonds if you don't kill them quick enough. For the shields, I've gone for relatively resistant heavy it's kind of a balance here because we need enough hit points to just survive a single fight and other than that we actually just want as much resistance we are going to go for a recharge build we're going to come back to that when we talk about the uh, the shield unit in a second but what i have on here is uh three shield boosters that are fitted with heavy duty super capacitor to buff up our hit points and then i have three shield boosters here that has resistant augmented and force block to kind of block a hole we have in our kinetic resistance for the core internals, you can see here I've done nothing with my bulkhead armor. Normally I would put a heavy duty deep plate on this just because it's free hit points. I haven't done this in this case. If you really want to max out the build, you should definitely put heavy duty deep plate on here. But since we are going to be relying on our shield, this shouldn't be needed. For the power plate, I have a 7A instead of an 8A. We really only needed the 7. So it was just in order to, uh, to save a bit of mass, get a bit of jump range. But since this is really intended to have a fleet carrier since we have no fuel scoop or anything like that you can fit an eight class power plant in here if you have it but you really only need the seven and then depending on what you have if you fit a seven you'll need an overcharge with thermal spread if you fit an eight you might actually be able to get away with a little bit of um of low emission i haven't actually tested that out but in this situation here, I've gone with a class 7 power plant with a uh, with an overcharged thermal spread. For the thrusters, I have 7A thrusters. Since we are going to be mining the egg and it does spin relatively quickly, we do want good thrusters. So 7A thrusters here with the standard dirty drive and drag drives. Frame shift drive, no surprises here. 6A frame shift drive, increased range and mass manager for better jump rates. D-rated life support, which again has been lightweighted. Same story with the sensors here, also D-rated and also a lightweight modification on those. For the power distributor, again, an 8A power distributor. Kind of keep those um, lasers running because they are pretty power hungry. And I've gone with a charge enhanced superconduit to give us an overall good spread. 
For the corn terminals, if we start here at the bottom, I have a detailed service scanner, so we can scan the rings and locate the hotspot. That is a must have. A 3A prospector, you really only need a 1A, but we had a class 3 slot anyway, so why not fit a class 3A so you have it. So if you want to go out and do some normal subsurface mining that's not at the egg, having that extra um, can be nice sometimes. And this has been modified with lightweight as well, again, to keep things nice and light, keep us maneuverable and keep our jump range not as terrible as it could be. For a refinery for those extra bins, always nice to have. Then we have a 3A collector limpy controller modified with lightweight again to keep things light. In the military compartments, I have Guardian Shield Reinforcement Packs, 3D of those, so 5D of those, again to buff up our hit points. Then I fit the fighter hanger. This is really an optional thing. What you can do is you can fit an extra collector limpet. You can do put more cargo in here if you want to. I like to bring a fighter. And that's just because I think it's fun to have a fighter around and you don't really need the fighter. This is very much a spot where you can like play around with it, do what you want in this. You might even consider um, putting that uh, like a 5A collector in uh, in here and then maybe dropping the collector limit down here if you want to use the class 4 slot for something instead. Like play around with these two slots here and do whatever you feel like fits your playstyle the best. But I do recommend that we fit at least the two 5A collectors here. These are both lightweight as well. And this brings us up to a total of eight active collectors, which is fine. Um, sometimes they're a little to slow side since collectors have a tendency to die quite a bit when you're mining a fast spinning egg. But overall, I think that it's okay. And then we come to the shield. You can see I've gone for the normal shield, not bi-weave, not prismatics. And this is because I felt like the... Bioweaves gave us too few hit points. Sometimes I've had relatively tough wings spawn when you're out there mining. I mean, consistent of like uh, a clipper and two Federal Assault ships. That's, that's a pretty tough wing, especially if they have a decent combat rating. And you need enough hit points to survive the full fight. But of course, as soon as the fight is over, we are going to have a lot of quote-unquote downtime where we are mining, where we can keep our shield recharging. So in situations like this, I I would normally go for bi-weaves, but I've gone for the normal shield generator here because I wanted that little bit extra hit points so that I was more comfortable surviving these more difficult um, pirate wings when they do spawn. In terms of engineering, of course, I've gone with a thermal resistant fast charge. So again, we've gone for a resistant heavy build because we are going to be relying on that shield regeneration that we get from, uh, from fast charge. And the three class seven slots are just cargo racks, so that's pretty straightforward. Taking a quick look at the ship stats, you can see your jump range is not amazing, but as I said, this is really intended to be supported by a, a fleet carrier. If you do not have a fleet carrier, you want to actually jump this thing around. What you could do is get that fighter hanger out and then fit a um, fuel scoop in there. Maybe you can fit a Guardian uh, FSD booster, depending on your preference, but something that kind of enhances your jump range if, uh, if you want to do that instead. You can see here 2,150 hit points of shield with decent resistances all above 50 and even our thermals above 60. So that's pretty decent resistance across the board. People always ask me about my fire group. So let's go with those real quick. You can see here I have one fire group, which is like my search or go look for a new rock kind of thing. If I'm not mining the egg, but I just want to do normal um, subsurface mining. When we go into mining mode, I keep the collector limpets and the subsurface displacement missile. Remember, if you hold down the trigger, the ship will continue to launch limpets until you reach your uh, capacity for how many active limpets you can have. So by having this on the same fire group as a subsurface missile, where you're holding down the trigger anyway when you're mining, that means that every time you fire off a missile, you hold down the trigger, it will automatically replenish uh, your collectors. So that's why I've gone for that. And you can see here only one of them is active at the moment. When the first one here runs out of ammo, I'll go in and I'll move over to the other one. Then I have a group here for combat, where I have my beam lasers on my primary fire and all my multi cannons on my secondary fire. And then the last group here is just the detailed surface scanner. So this is the build, and remember I have a ton of other builds if you're interested over on the commander's toolbox. Not just for mining, but also for PvE combat, for exploration, Xeno combat, plenty of builds over there. Go and check it out, there'll be a link in the description, both for direct to Coriolis for this, but also to the commander's toolbox. And then finally, if you found this video useful, I would really appreciate if you would consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, give the video a like if you liked it, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.